How is there? It was my first month on the job, so they gave me the easier task. Yeah, easy. <laughs> Fuck them. I know, I know, they can't see the future. They couldn't know what was going to happen that day. Anyway, easy was not. My coworkers filled me in on all the details, and I know you must have seen this on the news. So, here's what happened. The gifter, John Sanchez. Notorious serial killer. A two decade long mystery ended in the past year after a long, long hunt from a relative of the second out of his 13 victims he killed in his career as a flesh and bone boogeyman. So, he made a mistake, and now here we are. The newspapers didn't pay attention to his mistake, and the people in charge did nothing to talk about it. With good reason. But he went back to the place of his last, you know, because he forgot something. So, after the initial interview, we learned that he had this thing with him from his second crime onwards. And this last time wasn't any different. He just thought that this thing, this, um, treasure, as he called it, was in one of the boxes with his other tools. It wasn't. So he went back after he had burned the cabin where the, um, crime took place. A hunter saw his truck and he remembered the plate number. The gifter didn't see him and that's basically how they got him. But that's not the point. When um, asked about the um, remains of the uh, seven little girls whose bodies were never found, uh, he said they were buried, and he knew where, but he wasn't going to cooperate for free, he wanted something. So we gave him an offer, life in prison instead of the electric chair, and he refused. He actually wanted to sit in the chair. Well, nobody was going to stop him, that's for sure. Anyway, he was 52 years old. It could take decades for the state to kill him. How much of his life was he losing? Like, less than 10 years? Maybe even less since he was a smoker. But the families needed some sort of closure, so he got other offers. But what the hell do you offer someone waiting for death? At some point, someone in the interview room finally had enough and outright asked him what he wanted. And he just smiled. He said, I want to see her one more time. And by her, he meant Julie C. His, ah, uh, his his first victim and an only survivor just the the things that that he did to her was... anyway nobody felt like they were entitled to talk to her and ask for that of course but a desperate family will do anything for their kids, even if they already did. And so, someone, somehow, probably with some inside help, tracked this girl down and told her what the gifter wanted. Now, 
um, Julie say is almost 30, 30 years old, not a little girl anymore, and she reached out to us. She was very clear, her wounds were healed, and she loved her scars as much as, as much as he loved the rest of her. She went and confronted him. Two armed men were at the door, ready to enter and put him down for good, if need be, and he was handcuffed. Um, we were watching and listening to everything. <sighs> the, um, the things he said. One of the girls who was with me had to leave the room halfway through. She later told me she went to the bathroom and that, um, I just, you know, please ignore the state of the mirror. I was shivering. Um, one of our detectives was crying like a little boy. Our psychologist is pale as a corpse and the gifter was clearly getting pleasure out of every single thing he said. It's like every word, almost like another stab on her body, every memory, another ghost of days passed out to haunt her again. Every sentence a void capable of sucking every positive emotion and replacing it with darkness and despair. At least that's what I thought. But Julie was so calm. You know, maybe she was a great actress or maybe she did leave it all behind and he didn't have any power over her anymore and I and I'm telling you I saw her face after the emotional torture failed the gifter just gave up I guess he said to her I'll tell them where the bodies are but let me give you one more thing as a parting gift and she said yes and accepted his gift and he um, kept true to his word he told us where to find the bodies and she went to this warehouse our warehouse where the evidence of this case was kept and I was tasked along with several others to go with her the gifter's gift was his treasure the one thing that made him go back to that crime scene I was telling you about We opened the boxes. It was going to stay with us as evidence, but she wanted to see it, and of course, after all of that, nobody was gonna say no. And she saw it. It was a stuffed animal. A dog with a little thong on its bottom half, a hole in the chest, surrounded by a hundred stains and don't don't even ask about how it smelled and she said when she saw it mr. steps I had him with me when he kidnapped me and she extended her hand she was gonna touch it but then she um she closed her eyes and I finally saw her struggling for the first and only time during the entire ordeal. And she said, when all of this is over, I want it back. I'm gonna burn it. Of course, of course we're gonna give her the damn stuff animal. For another video, 
Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget to check the link for our social media descriptions. Sleep well, if you can. Ha, 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 ha,